here at Myrtle Beach working on a new project entitled Live at Myrtle Beach. And it's actually going to be a pop rock, soul type vibe. Uh, we're going back to the 70s, the 80s with classic rock, southern rock, a little bit of country rock, soul like pop. You know, just that ballad, mid tempo, and then a few up tempo just to switch up the energy a little bit. But um, born and raised in the South, grew up on good soul food, good soul music, but there was also a soulful element on pop radio stations. Rock groups that were heavily influenced by blues and, and soul, and um, you can hear it in their music and their melodies. And their vocal styling, it was really a unique blend of um, the hybrid sound of soul and pop and rock and blues. So I always kind of gravitated towards that type of music growing up just because it just had a different feel for me. Um, up until about the age of 10, I was pretty much raised on Motown music and um, classic soul music like um, Stax Records, um, High Records, which was on, I think, Al Green's label. Um, artists that were in the southern southern base from Alabama, you know, the um, you know, Muscle show sound that you heard in a lot of Rachel Franklin's um, Atlantic Records. But that whole vibe, that Muscle Shoals vibe, I mean, um, um, the high record five, and definitely, 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 um, in the Stacks records. Um, that had a lot to do with my, you know, sensibilities for the first 10 years of my life. And then when I started listening to pop radio station, I started to hear a lot of the um, influences from that music creep up in a lot of rock music and pop music. Southern rock, which was like southern bass, country influences, definitely soul influences, and most definitely blues influences. So um, after hearing a lot of that, and hearing the harmonies, hearing the vocal styles, I started to um, really embrace that music. So I've always listened to like different types of music ever since I was a kid. You know, all genres. And I really didn't consider um, the genre of music. If it was a good song. I loved it. You know, one of my most favorite songs from the '70s. Beth, and um, that music to me is probably one of the most perfect pop ballads you'll ever want to hear and I've ever heard in my lifetime. But it's just a beautiful lyric, a beautiful melody, simple, straight to the point. There's not a lot of instrumentation in it, but every all the instruments that are in the song, they all serve a purpose. Whether it's the beautiful strain line, the, um, the um, I think it was the electric. I want to go back to my roots, and my roots definitely are all of that, you know, pop, rock, soul, R&B, blues, jazz, definitely Motown, definitely gospel, but I want to um, just share a little bit of that, um, the um, rebel in me, I guess, if you will, to, um, you know, touch on some of the music that's outside of my assumed, you know, repertoire, but um, I hope you'll enjoy journey as we go on to uh, listen to the songs and I'll take you to the studio for some of the actual recording sessions and some of the writing sessions but I just want to share with you the behind the scenes you know a lot of times when you see records come out a lot of times you don't get to experience what happens on the front end but uh, and some artists have done that and those honestly are the best videos to watch I love to see the behind the scenes of how that record was made instead of the actual record That to me is the actual ingredients. Like if you see a beautiful cake made, you know that the ingredients that went into it are actually what makes that cake amazing. So you get to see the refinement of the sugar, the, the um, subtleties of the aromatics that are in there, the, um, the complexity.
complexities of like uh, 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 a berry mixture with a little bit of um, alcohol or something like that going into the dessert. You know, that's kind of how I look at um, the process of showing your work behind the scenes where you see all the ideas that never come to pass or see how you brainstorm an idea or how someone else can come into a project on a certain song and they'll add one element to the song that takes the song in the direction that it needs to go. You know, magic is made in the studio and people just humble themselves and just let let the atmosphere speak to them. So that's what I want to do with this project. I want to let the atmosphere speak to me and I definitely want to let the ancestors um, be honored in this process as well. You know, we come from a very musical people, and in fact, the way we speak, the way we walk, the way we live, it's all a song, it's all musical, it's melody, it's harmony, it's chord structure. You know, the way we live life is the way music is actually um, experienced. It's, it's never the same experience twice, even if you hear an exact same music who you are in that particular moment in your life will make you hear that music differently. And that's the beautiful thing about music, that it can become whatever you need to become. And it's everything to everybody. Oh wow, my favorite artist most definitely is um, Rogers, Prince Nelson, um, better known as Prince. Um, everything about him, he's like the consummate songwriter, performer, um, producer, visualist, um, live performer. He's like at the top of the game when it comes to live performances. Um, star maker, he gave us the time, he gave us Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, he gave us Morris Day, he gave us Apollonia, he gave us Vanity, Vanity Six, Jesse Johnson's review. Um, the family, Lisa and Wendy, um, Jerome Benton, um, Sheila E. There's there's tons more, but um, the thing I love about Prince as an artist is that he always he always knew who he was in terms of his music. It was very deliberate, um, very truthful, very honest. It came from a very honest place, even when he gave you some of the shock value in music. It was still based on an honest place of either a shared experience or just having a direct connection to someone they may have experienced um, some of the subject matter in his earlier works. But um, I think Prince, um, all in all, is probably um, probably one of the greatest artists to ever do music. Definitely in the category with the Beethoven's, uh, Mozart's, of, um, of the modern generation because he transformed music in the way it was created, in the way it was shared, in the way it was presented in a long format, in the way it was cross-marketed in movies, music, um, CD, album, cassette products, you know, his visuals were beyond masterful. I mean, some of his actual album artwork, I would consider it actually in the fine art category. You actually frame some of his work. It's, it's just high art at the highest form. So anyway, Prince definitely my most favorite artist. I would say my most favorite genre of music, I would have to say is, I wouldn't even say it's a genre, but if you have to give it a genre or identify as a genre, I would have to say the Motown sound of the 1960s through the probably very early 70s. And I say that because um, it just had a distinct, you know, tone to it, the vibe, the vibration of Motown's records, um, the clarity of the production, you know, um, the music's right there, you know, you can feel it physically, and you can, it's, it's, it's like it's, it, it's a direct connection sonically to your ears, to your, to your body, to your, to your whole structure. I think Motown, um, created something that can never be duplicated, just the whole process of the Motown label, the way it was run, pretty much like a Henry Ford factory, and that's what um, Barry Gordy, I can say, he modeled his 
business after. Production, distribution, the whole nine yards. But definitely Motown music is sonically the most, my most favorite genre of music. My favorite producer, um, definitely uh, Mr. Quincy Jones. And I say Quincy Jones for a lot of reasons, mainly because a lot of the music that I gravitated towards and really made me pay attention sonically and, and really listen closely were productions that he was involved with. Um, whether it was um, the um, stuff like that album where he um, stuff like that was on there but that was one of the dopest funk records ever you go and listen to it from start to finish and it's a masterpiece and definitely his work with um, Brothers Johnson never heard of an arrangement of Father Lyric 23 like that even though the original has similar characteristics he evolved the whole landscape of that song and you could actually see the beauty of that melody and the beauty of that song by the way Quincy Jones produced it Not overproduced, but it definitely was not underproduced. It was that perfect balance of like structure and cadence and timing and colorings and layerings without being overdone. So definitely Quincy Jones, my number one producer, and let's not forget he also produced Michael Jackson's debut, what we consider his debut album, um, Off the Wall, which was a huge smash and probably one of the most prolific um, albums of all time, in my opinion. I think Off the Wall definitely, to me, is his greatest work. A lot of people say Thriller. In terms of sales and notoriety, definitely Thriller. But in terms of like just, you know, changing the musical landscape and blurring the lines of, of, of pop, rock, soul, and just having great songs, you know, shout out to Rod Temperton, who was one of the key players behind the scenes writing on a lot of those records on the first and second album, but definitely off the wall, Rod Temperton was a, a vital part of in terms of production, writing, and, you know, other other views as well. As well. Greg Filling Games on keys, and definitely Mr. Quincy Jones behind the helm of producer, bringing a lot of the players in. Um, Doing that horn arrangement on the intro of Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, which is one of the baddest horn intros ever. Um, just a masterpiece, but definitely Quincy Jones, definitely the, the master of production. Favorite movie. So that's a toss up between um, Dream Girls and. Um, Probably um, Dream Girls and The Long Kiss Goodnight. Which was a back in the day movie with um, Gina Davis and Sammy Jackson, I believe, were the two main characters. But um, that was probably one of the best movies ever because it was just real low key, kind of like a kind of like a psychological thriller in a lot of aspects, but definitely action, adventure, it just had, it was, I think it was well acted and well written. Was, and especially came out of time when it was kind of like a new kind of, a new thing in terms of like heroin, even though we had already seen um, Sigourney Weaver do the um, Predator series. But to see Gina Davis um, as, as like this, this, this deadly femme fatale was pretty dope. Um, song Beth. Um, which is a beautiful song. Well, I want to do the one by Bad Company entitled Feel Like Making Love. And that was like one of the coldest records ever. That shit is just, it's, it's, it's like dynamic. It's just, it's a dope ass record. Um, so one of the two I would like to cover on this project, but it's going to be pop rock, pop rock and soul, basically. You know, guitar bass, acoustic bass, um, mid-tempo, up-tempo, and then a few ballads, but we're we'll gonna take it back to the 70s and the early 80s with that classic rock, southern rock, some of that soulful rock that um, that I grew up on. So that's that's the journey. So yeah, actually I am a chef. Um, 
And um, my favorite dish for myself is um, fried fish with grits and probably um, homemade biscuit with um, honey and syrup. with me this is chef craig on the beat chef craig bringing the heat in the kitchen in the studio let's cook uh, you know a, a good you know good healthy dose of just balanced respect for for nature for just the nature nature and the nurturing of our um of our of our beautiful earth you know how all the ecosystems work together, the plant life, the minerals in the soil, the air, the precipitation, the frost, the harvest, the spring, the pollination, um, the bee um, network. You know, there's so many things that work in tandem and in sync with one another. And um, I just wish that we would focus more on making great music because music is just like that, it's an ecosystem connects like-minded people, it connects, you know, healthy debate in people, it connects, you know, kindred spirits, you know, it just connects people to one another, communities to one another, tribes to other tribes, individuals to other individuals. I learned very early on in my age, in my early age, that that music was a great unifier because it helped me establish my first long-term friendships and it also as I became an adult, I've got some lifelong relationships and friendships out of there, and I'm thankful and blessed for those connections. I've worked with some of the best, you know, singers, artists, musicians you ever want to meet, and um, and none of them are necessarily a household name, but they all are incredible musicians and incredible artists, and I'm very blessed to have had a chance to work with them. So I just want to share my craft, and at some point be able to bring them into the equation because they deserve to be known, recognized, and just, you know, acknowledged, even in the, just the digital universe. So I just want to thank everyone for tuning in to Live at Myrtle Beach. And I thank everybody for coming along with me on this journey. I want to just share a little bit of my love for music, for artistry, for melody, for harmony, for good, soulful, rock theme, um, pop oriented, you know, good mixing of all those ingredients into some nice soulful music that you can enjoy at the beach and share and connect with one another. The whole goal of this project is to connect people to one another. To one another is what we should strive for, a connection so much for this awesome opportunity. Continue to become stars. We're going to do um, a new song I'm working on entitled The Heart Can Be Lonely. The Heart Can Be Lonely. And this is live at Myrtle Beach with video.
we got a life of love. Seems like we never 